Let's start with the tale of two Australians killed since October 7. Both tragedies, both devastating. Zomi Frankham and Galit Carbone. Zomi, aged 44, was killed while distributing aid in Gaza this week as a result of an accidental Israeli airstrike. Galit Carbone, aged 66, raised in Sydney and killed by Hamas gunmen on October 7. One of these deaths was entirely accidental. One was a deliberate murder. Zomi's death led to an apology from the Israeli Prime Minister and a vow to hold an inquiry to investigate what unfolded. Gullit's cold-blooded murder has seen no apology, no remorse, no inquiry. Zomi's death has led to calls for a war crimes investigation by Australian politicians. Zalit's, Galit's death led to no such calls. While both deaths are utterly unacceptable, what's alarming is the difference in the way Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong and the media have reacted to each death. Here were Albanese and Green Senator Sarah Hansen-Young today. And what isn't good enough is the statements that have been made, uh, including that uh, this is just a product of war. Uh, this is against humanitarian law. International humanitarian law makes it very clear that aid workers uh, should be able to provide that aid and that assistance free of the threat of losing their life. We need a permanent ceasefire. It's why a short-term pause um, is not enough. It's why the world's patience is growing thin. It's why Australians overwhelmingly support a ceasefire, because the excuses to continue bloodshed, horror and tragedy just don't stack up. But Gullit's death led to no obvious anger like this from Albanese or Senator Hanson Young. There were no furious press conferences where the Prime Minister demanded answers from the Palestinians. There were no angry calls to Qatar to demand accountability from the Hamas leadership, which they're harbouring. Nothing like the incensed demands the pair, Albanese and Wong, have made this week of Netanyahu even though he had already publicly apologised and committed to a full inquiry, as he should have. In fact, while the October massacre was still ongoing, Penny Wong was urging restraint. Where was the outrage? Two Australian deaths, two very different reactions. No enormous public show of anger for the deliberate murder of the Jew versus the full letter of the law for the accidental death where there's been an unconditional apology. This is an absurd moral cover the Australian government is giving to Hamas. White House National Security Advisor John Kirby has made the very clear point that Zomi's death was completely accidental. The State Department has a process in place. And to date, as you and I are speaking, they have not found any incidents where the Israelis have violated international humanitarian law. And lest you think we don't take it seriously, I can assure you that we do. We look at this in real time. They have, they have never violated international humanitarian law ever in the past five to six months. I'm telling you, the State Department has looked at incidents in the past and has yet to determine that any of those incidents violate international humanitarian law. Well, and what about the hypocrisy of leaders in America, Australia and Britain lecturing Israel about accidental deaths? These happen often, tragically, in war, as foreign editor of The Australian, Greg Sheridan, points out. Australian soldiers have, on numerous occasions, unintentionally killed civilians in the fog of war. Albanese and Penny Wong should remember that there's not a single conflict in which Australia has been involved in which our troops have not inadvertently killed civilians. War is terrible, terrible and full of grief, and but sometimes it's unavoidable. And he made the same point but went further in The Australian Today. He wrote, they should recall that there is not a single war in which Australia has participated in, which our soldiers among the finest in the world have not inadvertently killed some civilians. 
He said this is an ineradicable part of the gruesome truth of war, which is always horrible and full of grief, but sometimes unavoidable. Greg Sheridan writes, Wong says Israel must change its ways or lose international support. What does she mean by this? That Israel must unilaterally cease operations while Hamas refuses to release Israeli hostages? He writes that the Hamas battalions in Rafah should be allowed to re-emerge in the backbone of a new Hamas government in Gaza. Very good points there by Greg Sheridan. Well, Israel's government spokesperson, Elon Levy, said in a tweet that sometimes in war, militaries fighting terrorists make tragic mistakes and brave aid workers get killed. And to make his point, he posted this article where the United States determined that a Kabul drone had killed innocent aid worker and nine family members. So a United States American drone strike killing an innocent aid worker and nine family members. But I don't recall the multiple angry press conferences from Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong on this occasion or any other. And I don't remember, by the way, the Israeli Prime Minister coming out to lecture America about these deaths. Of course that didn't happen. And what about the media? Well, here's how the Sydney Morning Herald reported the death of Garlit. It's a small mention there up front, but if we can show you another page, it was on page seven, and it was a small story on the side of page seven. Hopefully we'll show you that image in a moment. A small story running down the side of page seven in the Sydney Morning Herald. And as you can see, or hopefully when we show you that image in a minute, the headline of the story was Sydney grandmother confirmed dead in Israel. But here's how the Sydney Morning Herald reported on Zomi's death today. The front page of the Herald, no less, the front page compared to a small story on page five. And the headline, charge soldiers for killer strike family demands. And by the way, it was yesterday's front page of the Sydney Morning Herald as well with the headline, Fury over killing of charity war worker. So two front pages in a row for the death of one Australian aid worker, but for the death of a Jewish Australian on October 7, it was a small story on the Sydney Morning Herald on the side of page five. Now, while I'm on this, let's get another few things straight. For all those inaccurately claiming that Israel isn't allowing aid into Gaza, that is rubbish. The Israeli government says it's close to facilitating the 20,000th aid truck into Gaza. 20,000 aid trucks into the Gaza Strip, 20,000. And that's since October 7. The claims of a famine are questionable at best as many experts, including, including Alan Dershowitz and Arab-Israeli journalists and the Israeli government as well, have all pointed out. And as for demanding a ceasefire of Israel, well, Israel has reportedly agreed to the terms of a ceasefire for many weeks now, around six weeks now. And it was a very generous deal that it agreed to, releasing many more Palestinians from its prisons than the number of hostages still held by Hamas. Yet it is Hamas that hasn't agreed to this ceasefire deal, deal that's been on the table that Israel has reportedly agreed to for weeks. And why won't Hamas agree to it? Because it won't release over 134 Jewish hostages including babies and children. Do these Jewish lives not matter to Penny Wong and Anthony Albanese? Because they do to me and they should to them.